Let's try a more difficult Lewis structure. So we have chromium, oxygen, four fluorines. Now, when we talk about Lewis structure, we're, we're really dealing with a, a fairly specific category. I mean, there's some exceptions to this, but we think of like one, one central atom and then you know everything laid out around it. So one central atom and then all the other elements laid out around it. And something I've said in the previous videos is that the first atom is going to be the central atom. So I want to sort of get this out of the way. So we're going to treat Krypton as the central atom, then we're going to put all the others in the middle, or just around it symmetrically. Jumping the gun a little bit. Let's do the valence electron count. Krypton, where is it? So Krypton, Oxygen, Fluorine. Let's take a look at the product table. And there's, let me go back, different color. There's Krypton, actually, there's Krypton, Fluorine, Oxygen. So Krypton was in that really group of three noble gases that actually react a little bit. Eight valence electrons, seven for the fluorines, and then six for the oxygen. Let's count them up. Okay, so one, one krypton plus one oxygen plus, well, each fluorine has seven times four. If you do the math on that, it gives you 42 valence electrons. Okay, now I am going to, again, just, I'm going to place them around the, uh, actually I'm going to anticipate a little bit of what it actually looks like, but it's still basically symmetrical. To sort of lay it out in that fashion around the krypton. First thing I want to do is connect all of the atoms together. And notice I'm connecting from an external atom to the central atom, okay? There's no ring structures in these examples that we're doing, so there's no like, there's none of that, <laughs> okay? Don't do that, please. There are ring structures in nature, there's plenty of them, but that's not what we're doing for, for this class. So then how many electrons have I used? Well, two, four, six, eight, ten. So minus ten used, I have 32 uh, left over. Those 32, again, uh, we're going to be dealing with uh, lone electron pairs or um, um, multiple bonds to get the, the full octet. Now, I actually want to do the, the fluorines first. The halogens have a theme. Okay, let's just take a look at uh, one of these. Oh, not that one. This gallium triiodine that we did the previous video. This look of a single bond and then um, three pairs of lone electrons, that is the most common pattern that you see for halogens. And for fluorine in particular, remember fluorine is on that uh, second row on the periodic table. Its octet maxes out at two. What that does actually, one thing with fluorine is it kind of limits how it can bond. And so it's going to bond like this over and over again. One single bond and then six lone electron pairs around the, uh, the structure. <laughs> so now if I go in and then count up the number of electrons from that one, well there's six times one, two, three, uh, four, that's, that's 24 valence electrons. Now for the, and now let me just tag this, this is with the, the fluorine. And then the math here is, um, so if I, do, if I subtract now these two numbers, I get eight valence electrons left. And actually, let me just switch to a different color. I should have been switching to colors, different colors anyway before, but let's highlight now our eight valence electrons. Where are they going to go? Okay. Well, we haven't touched oxygen at all. We know that it has to have eight electrons around it. And I just want to share with you something else. Back in that original example that we did in the first set of the videos dealing with Lewis structures, we had oxygen looking like this. This is one of the common ways that oxygen is going to appear. Double bond and lone pair electrons. Let's start off with that and see how far we get with it. Now one thing that I've done 
is the octet here is um, good. It has followed the octet rule. We have a full octet. So no more electrons are going to go around it. That'll be relevant in just a second. Um, and the fact that it has eight, you know, it's, this suggests that it's a good molecule so far. But how many did I use? One, two, three, four, five, six. Six of the eight. I still have two valence electrons that I have to put on this molecule. It can't go here because this octet is full. The octet of all the fluorines are four. Two, four, six, eight. That means that those two remaining electrons have to go on the central atom here, on krypton. Can krypton have this many electrons around it? And it can. Let's just count up the number of electrons. So krypton, it has an octet of 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14 electrons. Can it violate or expand its octet of 8? Well, it can. Because it's down here, right? It's this, this line. Any element below this line can expand its octet or violate the octet rule. So technically, the octet rule is fine here. Because, what are, again, what are our checks to know whether we have a valid Lewis structure? Have I used all the valence electrons? I have. Uh, are the octet rules satisfied? They are. And then the last check is going to be this formal charge check. We want to do that. Well, let's just sort of march through our, our elements here quickly. Six valence electrons minus two bonds minus four lone electrons, zero. That's good, right? Because this is a zero, right? There's no overall charge of this krypton. That suggests that, well, one thing it suggests strongly is that there's a decent chance that each element, each atom on the molecule is going to have a formal charge of zero. That is going to be the case for this one. Now, since all my fluorines look the same, I only need to do the formal charge of one of them, and I know all the others. So it's a valence electron count of seven minus the one bond minus the six lone electron pairs. That's zero. That's good. And now for the krypton. It better be zero or I have some problems. So its valence electron count is eight minus the number of bonds. One, two, three, four, five, six minus the number of elect lone electrons. Two. And what do you know? It has a formal charge of zero as well. Zero plus zero plus zero adds up to zero. So it's no longer a question mark. Check. So if it follows all these rules, then we say this is a valid Lewis structure. So again, these rules are here so that if you get an example like this, where it's some element that you've never dealt with, and then when you actually put it together, it looks like nothing you've ever seen, it's okay. Because you have this as a guideline to know that you have a correct Lewis structure.